government. Don't do stupid things. Don't do stupid things that drives away the human talent. And that's what we mean by intelligent city conversions. Manufacturing, services, and the government doing intelligent things. And one of the intelligent projects that we have done is, of course, the Penang International Science Center. We established the Penang Science Cluster. We got academia, we got industrialists, of course, government provide the impetus, <coughs> we provide subsidy money, but after that, we let the industrialists and the multinational corporations take over. It is your show. Dr. Hari can attest to the fact that the state government did not interfere whatsoever. We only come and watch it. And that partnership worked. Penang Science Cafe worked. Penang Science Cafe, where we start even younger, the kids, instead of just using their hands to play computer games on the handphones, you want them to work their hands on building robots. And that is done through the Penang Science Cafe. Our next opening will be the Yap Choi building on Beach Street, where we are spending more than 5 million ringgit to do the renovation, investing in education so that we can build the future. And this is a testimony of doing intelligent things. So we want to start off, as I said, not just manufacturing, not just services, but also public sector. Of course, intelligence is not related to only doing that. You've got to have digital intelligence for the hand. You've got to have sustainable intelligence, make sure you don't screw your environment process. And I think you should also to, you also must remember that we must have the uh, residual intelligence, build on it, residual intelligence experience acquired over the years. And I think this is what makes Penang so special. Not just only in science, but also in art. How is it that over the last six years, suddenly Penang has become the art capital, the art, culture and heritage capital of Malaysia? I don't want to give credit because the government, state government, has not done anything on art. None of my ESCO uh, members are artists. I'm not an artist. I know nothing about art. But what we have done is this. We apply the same model. Do it intelligently. Keep out of the way. A government must know where to step aside and not get involved. Art, you see, in uh, heritage and play, all these are done by artists and painters. You do it. Let the public decide. Of course, let the experts decide also. Art experts, uh, not, not self-proclaimed experts in the government who knows nothing but like to pretend they are very clever. <laughs> you know, the, the, the Chinese has, has a Hokkien, uh, Penang Hokkien, they always say, they always say like, you want to be clever, yeah, be clever, but don't try to be too smart by half. I gao ho, my gay gao ah. Don't try to be too clever by heart. I mean, that is the line that where we should pull back, let the experts take over. And I think this is a, a very important lesson because if you, you know that lesson, then not only will we save a lot of money, but more important of all, we will save a lot of heartache. And for Penang, the future, of course, as I said, conversions, really human talent. There is no substitute to success except hard work. And Penang has no natural resources. We got no oil, we have no gas, we got no timber, of course we got no land. We only got people. And you got to develop that human resource. No matter how painful it is, you got to tell them, work hard, work smart, and the money will come. So even though we are short of human resources, but I believe that uh, if you do it intelligently, I think we can still press ahead. And the opportunities are boundless. Look at the ASEAN economic community that will be that will come into play on the 31st of December next year. 600 million people with a GDP of 2 trillion US dollars. I think this, of course, brings us tremendous opportunities. But how are we going to take advantage and how are we going to make sure we do not miss them? And that's why. Penang has to move up the value chain. Whether we like it or not, we've got to move up the value chain. Knowledge in taxi industries, high tech, tech income, high uh, value added that can generate high income jobs. 
And to do that, of course, we must focus on productivity, we must focus on innovation. Because these are the sectors that can, are the keys that can open the window or the door to prosperity. A sustainable growth strategy, in that sense, will require reforms to overcome key challenges, and that includes infrastructure investment, investing in human capital to have more highly skilled work workers and professionals, and of course, establishing a livable city so that these professionals who want to come and live and stay here. That means making sure that the city is clean, green, safe and healthy. We are emphasizing on these attributes. You know, yesterday I couldn't open the World Toilet Day because I was having an escrow meeting. So I sent Dr. Rashid to represent me. We were asking why is the Chief Minister and the Deputy Chief Minister all so concerned about toilets? <laughs> But you know that when you talk about cleanliness, <coughs> cleanliness will be measured by how clean your toilets are. Your toilets clean, that means your mind, your paradigm, your mindset is clean. Is clean. If your toilet is dirty, you can talk about how clean the whole environment is, but you know what? It doesn't matter. So, toilets are very important for cleaning. And uh, we are proud that if you look at some of our toilets that we have built, of course not all, but some of the toilets that we have upgraded by uh, the one in Aitam, cleanest market toilet in Malaysia. Right? <laughs> I say market toilet, not the cleanest toilet. Huh? Market toilet. Don't believe me, go and try. <laughs> not, only, not only is it okay, it's a uh, five star rated. When I went down to other uh, places, they come and tell me they don't talk about the Penang Hill, la. they don't talk about the heritage and crave, la. they don't talk about those areas they visited, they talk to me about toilets. <laughs> I look at him, why are you so particular about toilets? That day, stomach ache, no choice. Went to the Aita market, emergency, I talked, sure, dirty one. I was stunned. Toilet is so clean, I don't believe it. Up to now, I don't believe it. I want to go back and see the toilet again. <laughs> So that is Aita. I think we've also other places. I like, hope to upgrade the toilets, even in schools. <laughs> you know, one of my met a urologist who tell me that like, many people suffer urinary tract problems because when they were young, they did not go to the toilet too dirty, too smelly, too dark. <laughs> so one of our efforts that we made, we gave money to schools that make sure we start with toilets. So I think these are seem maybe seem to be minor matters. But it is important because it adds on to the quality of life. Especially that mindset change. Achieve international standards and status. You go to foreign countries, don't have to worry about toilets, isn't it? You go to the West, you never worry about toilets because you know invariably they will be clean. But not in Malaysia. So if we can achieve that same standards in Penang, I think this will be a very big step forward. Now, transforming our economy, of course, entails a major shift in our attitude towards the importance of knowledge. We need to change our mindset to improve labour productiv productivity, be innovative and boost economic activities and growth in all sectors. And I'd just like to give you some numbers to let you understand that the shift that we have done in the past, we decided that we need to focus more on the services sector because that's where you, they provide high income jobs and uh, the room for expansion is also growing. So for manufacturing, we're looking at how we can uh, give also equal emphasis to the services sector. Now in 2030, both sectors remain the main sources of growth for Penang. The manufacturing sector grew by 3.5% while services sector grew at a higher rate of 5.8%. Of course, I think the manufacturing sector will grow higher this year because of higher demand and better uh, bookings and orders from uh, customers. But if the manufacturing sector grows, service sector will grow even more. Uh, and uh, 
If you look at the shared services and outsourcing sector in Malaysia, it was worth 12.8 billion million last year, 22% rise from 2012. And uh, this is where uh, Penang can benefit greatly if we grow the services sector. Now, if you look at the numbers, we used to be 54% manufacturing, 41% services. That was in uh, 2005. Now, in that eight years, that has changed to 48% manufacturing, 47% services. So what you see now is an equalization. Of course, that doesn't mean that the GDP remains the same. The GDP has also grown. In the over eight years, it has grown from around 33 billion GDP to around 63 billion ringgit GDP for Pinet. So it's almost double, but not, not quite yet double. But more importantly is that we have moved up the higher value chain, with higher value added products, and also equalization between both manufacturing and services sector. So we need to develop, of course, our services sector. New ecosystem, similar to what we find in the manufacturing sector, not just uh, the residual intelligence, but also the supply chain network, which is critical, uh, and as well as the environment where things work. Now, in Penang, if you want to build the civil sector to enhance the knowledge content of the economy, uh, not only do we have to continue uh, to deepen and expand cyber city, uh, which is an important catalyst of growth, but also we've got to provide the necessary grade A officers for established companies. At the moment, most of the SSO or shared services and outsourcing centers are those involving multinational corporations, centralizing their functional operations such as super resource, financing, and accounting, as well as, of course, IT. Uh, companies such as AMD, Dell, Intel, and Motorola have done so, as an extension of their manufacturing base. But there are also other companies without that manufacturing base who have set up their shared services here. And these are companies like uh, Air Asia, moving now from Bangkok, Burma, the food, the edible oil giant, IHS, Ekman, Ton Forwarding, Juro Shipyard from Singapore, and of course, the Green Villa, Green City Group, with a head count of 1,000, handling 25 million transactions with a value of 6 trillion US dollars. And they employ almost all Malaysians, all with high income jobs. So if Penang can accommodate and fulfill the demands of Citigroup, when they set up their global credit transactions hub in Penang, 24 hour operation, definitely I think Penang is ready for other established companies, whether in the financial services or in IT. And to stimulate future growth, the Penang State Government has set aside land next to the airport. We have launched the BPO Park on the 1st of March this year. We have also entered an agreement to build BPO Prime opposite the Spice Arena Stadium at the present PDC headquarters. We have also, we are hoping to offer for, for both these uh, efforts or these new initiatives, we are hoping to offer 1.7 million square feet of Great A office space within the next five years. The Penang BPO Hub next to the airport will be 74 acres. It's the first BPO project in Malaysia and we hope that this will see the creation of 30,000 high paying and knowledge intensive jobs. The setting up of the BPO hub will be among some of the initiatives taken by the state to attract and retain the talent in Pinan. And uh, we hope that this will also benefit <coughs> and fulfill KPMG's prediction 
of Penang as one of the 31 future BPO hubs of the world. Now, apart from these two initiatives, we are also establishing what I call Creative Animation Triggers, AT, in Georgetown. We have, we, have, we have received tremendous interest for animation companies to set up their base in Penang, but surprisingly, they do not want more than offices. They want to be in a heritage and clay because they feel that when you are in that type of atmosphere with all the heritage buildings surrounding you, it would spark off creativity and innovation. So for that reason, if this is what they want, we got to give them what they want because you want to attract those creative types in the animation industry. We have taken over the lease for the Wisma Yapchori building uh, in uh, Georgetown Heritage and Clay. Right, we are investing 5 million ringgit to do the necessary renovation and hopefully it will be open for business next year. So we hope to get more creative animation types, those who are doing the latest uh, stuff in our animated movies to come to play. Now ladies and gentlemen, Malaysia's total factor productivity of DFT growth was 2.3%. And that is very low for a middle income economy. Uh, if you continue to have a DFP of only 2.3%, there's some doubt whether you can achieve high income economy status. Now, for, for us to be competitive, I think you should have a higher DFP. Uh, and that means a realization that. You just cannot depend on your comparative advantages anymore. The standard economic tax is that comparative advantages. I think that is not feasible anymore. You will also to look at competitive advantages. And according to the World Economic Forum World Competitiveness Report 2014 to 15, in terms of competitiveness, Malaysia has much to improve in five areas. Number one, corruption. Improve not in terms of having more corruption but reduce corruption. Huh? <laughs> Number two, inefficient government bureaucracy. Three, poor work ethics in national labor force. Four, insufficient capac capacity to innovate. And five, inadequately educated workforce. Now, Penang fortunately enjoys a reputation of being one of the most efficient and cleanest government in Malaysia. Through, image, through implementation of cap governance, competency, accountability, and transparency. We are praised not only by the Auditor General's report every year, but we are also praised by Transparency International. We have also an established reputation of a good work ethic in the manufacturing sector, built up over the 40 years, making Penang one of the most dynamic electronics and electrical cluster, as well as medical devices cluster in the world. Our emphasis, especially on productivity enablers, specifically, specifically focusing on promoting the development of concentrated industrial clusters and its supporting ecosystems, of course, increase the quality of what we can offer to quality investors. Now, we will continue the strong collaboration between academia and business, as well as provide a strong focus on education to increase productivity and good work ethics with skills development to facilitate industries to move up the value chain. And when we talk about uh, education, education, of course, is our life goal to the future. Not only can it reduce inequality, it can provide mobility and opportunity to all. A sound education foundation is necessary to provide ladders of opportunity and escalators to mobility. And to do that, we have adopted a three-prong approach to strengthening our education system. We are aware that the PISA rankings have not given us very high marks. The program of international student assessment places our 15-year-olds in terms of mastery in science and mathematics at the low end. Our 15-year-olds are three years behind the advanced countries, Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Singapore, 
Shark High. But what is pressing on with our annual Penang International Science Fair, which was done very successfully uh, last weekend at the Spice Arena. And also, uh, we are hoping to start off the Penang Tech Dome model after the San Jose Tech Dome. And finally, of course, we have built learning centers to provide a form of STEM teaching. STEM teaching in science, technology, engineering, and math. We have modified it to call it esteem teaching. Why esteem? Well, you need to have English. So it's S-T-E-E-M. But you also need to give the students a different teaching approach by engaging with them. We call it engagement teaching. That's why esteem. E-S-T-E-E-M. Engagement, Science, Technology, Engineering, English and Mathematics. And the teachers will not be school teachers. They'll be engineers. And we believe that we have engineers teaching because engineers who work in the multinational corporations, they make things work. They have a passion. They make science alive instead of something that you read in the books. And we hope that this will change their perception of science. There is something glamorous, exciting, and most important of all, let the engineers tell them, you can make a lot of money by becoming an engineer. <laughs> People always think that you want to be rich, you can, must be an accountant or a lawyer. But I think you should tell them, you can be even richer by becoming a tech premium. Have inventions, then you can employ all the, all the lawyers and accountants to do the work for you. I think that is important. That is very important. After all, the richest men in the world now are who? No longer accountants and lawyers. Who are the richest people in the world? Used to be Bill Gates, and now Mark Zuckerberg, and then now Jack Ma, Alibaba, and Google. The list goes on and on and on. So these are all the technical brilliance, and we must not miss the boat. That's why it's important that we try to master uh, science and math. We hope there is SC teaching where we actually finish our first Penang Learning Center to conduct ST teaching in Kapung Bua Pala. We hope to build one in every district, and hopefully our Penang Science uh, Cluster, our Penang Science Council can start off the first program next year. And we hope that, of course, perhaps we can also contribute not just our time but also maybe in terms of funding for this Penang learning sector effort to reach out to students especially those who are weak in these subjects to have that required and requisite mastery of science and technology and of course not just uh, universities that we are bringing in we are bringing in uh, uh, KD University University of Hull from Britain Asian Women Leadership University, uh, held by Smith College from the United States. But we want to bring in something different, vocational education. Not the one that we have here. This is German vocational education, where if possible, the teaching can be done in the factory or in the facility. You work and learn, or you learn and work. I don't know. And you learn and work for three to four years. When you graduate, you are given a lifetime employment by that company. And we hope that this can be achieved because we've got to leverage it on our existing companies, especially German companies. If we can do it, not only will we, will we be the first in Malaysia, I think more importantly, this will open up new avenues, new opportunities for students who are not interested in academic learning, but once to do the applied stuff, work with their hands, and at the same time, gain the necessary technical skills and knowledge uh, so that they can contribute towards the whole uh, manufacturing ecosystem. Now, we need to focus again on productivity improvements and innovation capabilities to ensure export dynamism. And I think clearly we took a look at the five challenges outlined by the World Economic Forum, a combative defense report, corruption, efficient government bureaucracy, poor work ethic, sufficient capacity to innovate, 
in adequately educated workforce, we are making ground slowly but surely to address these challenges. Uh, we would not want to say that uh, we are definitely uh, achieved uh, these benchmarks, but I think we are making progress. And we are making progress not because it's the government's effort. We are making progress because it is not the government effort. Because nothing works better if you get the private sector involved. They know what the market wants. They know what are the knowledge centers or the sources of knowledge that we must master. And I think this is the partnership that we want to offer or we want to offer to nations. A model where it is not only that the government does it alone because the government does best, but the government does it in concert and partnership with all the stakeholders, whether it's the private sector or the public civil society sector. Because we know that we do not know much and we need your knowledge and expertise to help to move the state forward. So, um, building human talent is of course still the key aspect for making Penang a high income economy and intelligent and international city. But I think uh, what is important is this is that we need to show case Penang also has a creative cluster. Uh, a creative and innovative cluster. We need to have R&D. Actually, electronics industry is doing fine work in the R&D field. I think we need to expand. We need to widen the pool. We need to deepen the pool. And I think that we need to promote Penang as a natural creative cluster for the world. We have all the necessary conditions. We have the talent, we have the technology, and I think we have the tolerance. The three T's of establishing a, a creative cluster. Talent, technology, and tolerance. We are open towards new ideas. We are not afraid of being criticized. We accept criticisms. And I think it is that sense of freedom that I think will be the most important asset for me. You are free to criticize, you are free to realize your potential, and of course you are free to work hard and make your dreams come true. That is what we offer for you. So before I end my speech, I would like to thank all of you for making today's event a success, especially Mr. Lee. Uh, who has actually worked hard uh, to make this uh, first event, inaugural event, but I'm sure it will be very well received in the future. And also I'd like to thank the distinguished speakers for gathering today, uh, for sharing the experiences with us. And I hope all of you will have fruitful time gaining knowledge and extend and changing ideas. And that's all together. Whether you are from Penang or not, doesn't matter. But as long as you have a Penang spirit, and what is the Penang spirit? A belief in Penang has an oasis of tolerance that celebrates diversity and a center for excellence and human talents. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jamama Bohoman from Lincoln.